What's going on, growers? It's James Frigioni coming to you live from Jersey. Today, me and Tucker are going to share with you the technique of pruning grapes that will change your life. Let's go! We are going to jump right into the pruning process, and then I'll add some specific details as we progress. So to start off, there's really only two styles of pruning grapes. You have cane pruning and spur pruning. And I also want to mention that grapes are one of the most forgiving fruits when it comes to pruning. So if you made a mistake last year or you make a mistake this year, that's okay. You can always fix it the next year. Let's take a look at a grape that's at the age of maturity. Look at this thing right here. At first glance, it looks like a, it looks like a jumbled mess and it looks like it would be really confusing to prune as you look over the thing, but it's actually quite simple. And I think it will be simple for you after I finish showing you exactly how to prune. So if you have a grapevine and you're not sure which variety it is or how it should be pruned, you always want to prune it to the cane style of pruning. And then in the spring, you'll see where the fruit is and that will determine how you should prune it the next year. Let's get this vine pruned to the cane style. I keep saying that word, cane, 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 and that's one of the most important words when it comes to pruning grapes. So let me tell you what a cane is. A cane is the one-year-old growth on a, on a grapevine, and this is where the fruit is going to be. So the cane usually has a light tan color. So let me give you an example. Right here is a cane. Here's one, the growth that grew last year. It's gonna be one years old in the spring. This is the older growth, about two years old. This is the older growth too. Right here, this is a cane. Even though it looks a bit darker, this is the growth from last year. This isn't a cane, this is a two-year-old growth. So again, your canes are gonna be your one-year-old growth. That's what we wanna focus on when it comes to pruning grapes because that's where all the fruit is gonna be. Before we make any cuts, let me bring you to a location where I already partly pruned this grape. So here is a grapevine that I've partly pruned. Right here is a cane that grew from last year. Look at it, it's going all the way down the fence line. So when I'm done pruning, I'm going to end with two canes going in opposite directions. So this cane right here, let me show you where the fruit will be. Here's the cane, it grew last year. It's gonna be one, year old, one years old in the spring. Everywhere there's a bud, once spring comes, you're going to have a shoot that grows just like this. On that shoot is where your fruit is going to be. So there'll be fruit here, fruit here, a shoot and there'll be fruit and then it'll shoot here and there'll be fruit there as well. That's why I tied it relatively low because the shoots are gonna grow up and my grapes are gonna be hanging right here. So now we know what a cane is and how it fruits. Let's go over to that jumbled mess of a grape and start selecting the canes and pruning the other ones out. Here's the grapevine we're going to be working on. Like I said, it was a jumbled mess, but now we know we just wanna keep basically two of the best canes. So when you're picking your canes, the first thing you want to do is choose your canes and then tie them down. You don't wanna make any of the other cuts until you get your canes and tie them down because in the process of tying your canes down, you could possibly break one. So we just wanna be really careful when we're doing that. So I decided I'm gonna keep this cane up here and I'm going to keep this cane right here. So essentially all the other canes I can remove. Before I do that though, I'm going to tie this cane down just so I know it's okay. So I'm gonna come on this side. I'm gonna, this is our cane and I'm gonna remove all this side growth. I'm just gonna remove these side pieces on here. The tendril, it's gonna move all the side pieces off this cane. And then I don't have to, need it to be that long, so I'm just gonna cut it here. On average, for your plants, you can keep your canes about uh, two feet long, dependent upon how old your plant is. My plants are a bit older, so I'm gonna keep it just a bit longer. I'm gonna take this cane, and I wanna tie it down here. So I'm gonna tie it down there first. Let me get a zip tie. So we're gonna take a zip tie and tie this grape. I'm just gonna do that because it's quick to use a zip tie, but you should, it'd be better to use something like uh, this garden tape. This stuff works pretty good, but it takes a little bit to tie it. So I'm just gonna use this to start. So we're gonna use the, take this grape, we're gonna bend it pretty low, as low as we can. It's okay that it's not as low as the other one. It just means that our fruit is gonna be higher up. So let's just tie this for now like that and then the rest I'll tie this way but it's sitting good as it is so let's start removing some of the other canes we chose that cane that's good actually let's tie down the other cane before we start removing anything else let's move over to our other cane now again we're gonna cut off this uh, extra growth this is all last year and this is last year too it was just such a vigorous cane that it had a lot of side growth I'm gonna remove these and then this one's actually going through my fence line a bit, which isn't great, but that's okay. I can still get it out. I'm just going to tie these tendrils off. And I want it about this long. I, want, I don't want my cane being super long because it's going to start getting reaching my other grapes if you look to the left. 
So we've got a lot of grapes on this line, so I'll keep them pretty short so we can get as much fruit on this fence line as possible. So there's our other cane. We'll zip tie it down here. And this is why you wanna uh, choose your canes and tie them first because if you cut all the other ones out and one of these breaks, you got no cane left. You're not gonna get any fruit the next year. So let's tie this here. Tuck's watching closely, making sure everything's going well. And then I'm just gonna remove this. So, back up a little. We now have two canes. One cane going this way, one cane going this way. I can now remove everything else. Can you believe that? Everything else can be taken out. That's all I really need. But what we wanna make sure is we're not removing these canes. So this whole piece down here, this whole old growth, all this, I can take that out. Before I do that though, I wanna make sure that you're always wearing eye protection at this part. So when you start yanking at these grapes, they can really snap back at you and hit, and hit you in the eye. So just make sure you protect your eyes. So we're gonna cut all this out. I know I can remove this whole piece here. Let's do that. Cut this out. This is all out. So I'm just gonna finish cutting most of this all out and I'll show you guys what it looks like at the end. There we go, all finished pruning. As you can see, we now have our two canes going in each direction. This is where all of our fruit's gonna be. One thing you'll notice is I left one extra cane down here just because I'm gonna tie this one down here. I'd like to have three canes in this case. You could do two canes, four canes. It really has everything to do with how many buds you're leaving on the canes because the amount of buds you have is going to affect how much fruit you're going to get. And you need to make sure you have a balance between as, the amount of fruit you're going to get and how old your vine is. So I've got a pretty lot of buds on this one. I could probably shorten it just a bit on that side. But we're gonna just, all we gotta do is just zip tie this one down just like this, and this vine is all finished pruning. Come in real quick. One thing you'll notice is I left a few little short canes right next to what's called the head of the vine. Um, we're gonna talk more about that later, but let's move to a different section and keep going. Let's take a break from pruning real quick, see what the boss is up to. So Tuck's been doing great, snacking on a carrot. A lot of you have been asking how he's doing, and he's doing fantastic. We actually just recently got him on the prednisone, a steroid, to help him with the tracheal collapse, and it's really making a huge difference. He seems to, uh, you know, I'll be doing a lot better after the prednisone, so we're real thankful for that. So me and Tuck appreciate you guys caring about him and asking a lot of questions, and we're gonna keep you updated on just how he's doing. I also wanted to mention that we got, still have the Tuck merch, so if you wanna support Team Grow, you wanna support Tuck, check one out at jamesprigioni.com. Now that we have a better understanding of what cane pruning is, we can move on to spur pruning. And one of the most important things in this video, again, is what you need to remember is the cane is where the fruit's gonna be. That one-year-old wood, that's where the fruit is going to be on the vine. So how do we determine whether to cane prune or spur prune? Well, that's gonna be determined on where the fruit appears on the vine. So for instance, a vine that should be cane pruned, here's our cane, right? It will fruit on all these buds going down here. So say like the 10th bud, that will grow a shoot and there'll be fruit on that. As opposed to vines that should be spur pruned. So vines that should be spur pruned, the fruit is going to appear on the first four buds. So one, two, three or four buds. So if we cane prune this vine and it's, it's, it's a variety that should be spur pruned, all the fruit is gonna be right here. It's gonna be on these first three buds. The fruit's gonna be clustered here and the fruit's all gonna be clustered here. So all this, we're going to just waste the space. It's, it's, it's not worth it. So how can we set a vine up so that it has three bud canes going along the whole length. And that's where the spur, that's where the spur training comes in. Let me bring you to a section over here and give you an example of the spur training. Here's another grapevine that we haven't pruned yet. So I showed you how to do it to the cane style. Let's move on to the spur pruning style. So imagine that we prune this, if, that this was a vine that should have been spur pruned, but we pruned it to a cane. If we leave this cane, this back cane right here, it's gonna fruit on the first three or four buds. All the fruit's gonna be stuck there. We're gonna be wasting all the extra space. We don't wanna do that. We wanna have three bud spurs spread along the whole grapevine. So notice this branch right here, or this what's called a cordon if it's two years or older. This is two years old, this, this whole vine right here. And the shoots that are coming off of it, this is one year old growth. 
So that means these are where the, the shoots are gonna come up and all your fruit is going to be. If this is a vine that should be spur pruned, remember, all the fruit is gonna be on the first three or four buds on here. So what we can do is cut that down to three or four buds because that's where all the fruit's gonna be. So now we have this one-year-old fruiting wood going down the length of the vine. We'll do the same thing here. One-year-old growth, we'll prune that down to three buds, just like that. That's where your fruit is gonna be next year. Move to another one down here. We're gonna cut it down to two or three buds. These are what's known as two or three bud spurs because the, again, the shoots are gonna come from here and this is where the fruit's gonna be. So instead of having all the fruit, if we pruned it like a cane, instead of having all the fruit down right at the base where our canes would be, we instead spread those canes over the length of the fence line by pruning them to two bud spurs. So this cordon wood, this piece, this wood here is always going to stay there. Let me show you an example of what will happen the next year. Right here is the same thing we had last year. This old piece of wood was two years old, was, was two years old last year. Now it's three years old. This going up right here, last year was one years old. I cut it down to three buds, as you see right here. Those three buds all grew and now they're canes. So these had the fruit on it, move up here. See the fruit up there? So these new canes had the fruit on them. So it was a three bud spur. It produced three buds, produced the fruit, and then this is the next year. So again, this was the, the spur that we left last year. It grew three buds, now these are the canes. So what we want again this year is three buds. So how we do that is, all we really want, we'll choose this one, is these three buds right here. So what that means is we can just remove this side. Let's move this. And then cut this down to three buds. And again, we're back at a three bud spur again. So this section will always remain. And you'll just, every year, cut it down to three buds. Because if you think about it, next year, these three buds are gonna grow. So we'll have those three, and then we'll cut it back down to two or three buds again. So this is what happens the first year, what it will look like, your three buds. Next year, your three buds will grow, and you'll cut it back down to three buds. So our fruit is going to be on these three buds right here and we can spread that across the whole length of the vine. That's how you spur prune. So here's another example right here. What do we want? We want a three bud spur. We don't need this. We want three buds. That's gonna be your spur right there. Same section right here. We want a three bud spur. We're gonna remove this. We're gonna take this out and we're gonna leave one, two, three buds. You can leave two or three buds dependent. Here's another example right here. We cut that last year. This grew. We're gonna remove this. We're gonna keep three buds. That is how you would prune it if you, wanted to pr if you wanted to spur prune this vine. That's really how you do it right there. But as I showed you before, this actually fruited much higher up on the, on the buds. So this, is a, this one should be cane prune as well. I was just showing you the spur and prune as an example. So let's just finish spur pruning it. We'll leave this spur. We'll leave that one. Here's a spur down here. Cut it to three. Another one here. This one actually is a little older growth, so we're gonna have to cut it up to here. So there you are. It will fruit from these three buds. From these three buds will get fruit. From these three buds will get fruit. And from these three buds will get fruit. So again, we're spreading that cane wood, which is the fruiting wood, over a longer area. This way we get fruit in this whole, whole section. And we don't just waste all of our space by getting fruit in just one little spot if we cane prune a vine that should be spur pruned. I'm over at the grape arbor now, and I wanna show you how to dictate exactly where the fruit would be. So what I, the way I prune this is I prune this to a cane pruning style, the same as I showed you before, but I make it so all the fruit is above me. If you remember in the summer, you can still see some of the sections where I would just walk by here and there'd be so many grapes, they'd be bumping into my head. But all the grapes were spread out along the arbor up top here and none of them were along the edge here. So the way we do that is we use the same understanding as we used for the previous one where we only wanna keep the canes. So come back over here. This is all the old growth. None of that's ever gonna have fruit on it. But here, right here is a cane a new cane growing, this one right here. So this is going to have fruit on it. So what I do is I just select the canes from the top here. This is my, what's known as a renewal zone. This is where all my new canes come from. 
I select the ones, the one cane, and then I allow one cane to go through the, down the length of each of these. So essentially it's just one cane per, per, per support, and then all my fruit comes off of that. So what I do is I just say, say I wanna keep this cane right here. Again, I'll just take it, prune off, tie it down, and remove the other ones. It takes a while to do, but it's, relative, it's really simple. It's the same understanding. And if I only have canes up top here, that are the only locations where my fruit is going to be. So I won't have any wasted fruiting down here. If I see some, some uh, buds pop up at the, at the, in the spring and there's some growth coming from sections down here, all I'll do is I'll just rub that growth off because I don't want it to waste any energy. I only allow the growth to come up top here and then the canes to spread along all the way to the top. That's this way, all my fruit is above me here. Now that we know how to both cane prune and spur prune, I wanna bring you back to one of my cane prune vines and show you how we can set it up so that it will have good canes for next year. So here's the canes that I kept, if you remember, one going this way, all the way across, and then one going this way, all the way across. I also kept one down here for some additional fruit. But you'll notice right next to, at the top of my vine, this is what's called the head of the vine or the renewal zone. So renewal zone meaning I need to renew buds for next year. So if I just cut all this stuff off, then I could get growth coming from here. That could be my next year's growth. But what I really wanna do is I'll cut one of these uh, canes that I've left, relatively short, say two buds right here. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna leave those two buds that will grow in these directions so that next year, this new growth will be the canes to replace the old ones. If I just remove everything, then I'm not gonna have a location for my canes to renew. But if I keep a section like I have here, two buds on that cane, and I'll keep two buds on this cane, right at what's called a renewal zone, these will grow out to be my canes for the next year. So not only are we focusing on the fruit that's gonna be growing this year, but we're setting up canes for, to fruit even the year after that. So, the more you plan and the better you prune your grapevines, the easier it's going to be to not only get fruit, but to also manage the vines in the future. I just got a few more things to mention before I let you go. One of them is, uh, say you have a vine growing like this, and why wouldn't, why wouldn't I just keep a cane like out here? Why wouldn't I just keep this cane and then cut the rest off and let it grow? The reason I wanna do that is because we want our canes to originate close to what's known as the renewal zone, where everything's coming from. So if I have a cane that starts all the way down here, then it's gonna start fruiting down here. I'm gonna waste all the space where I could have had fruit. So that's why we want our canes to originate, like here, come over here. We want our canes to originate at the head of the vine. And then we will have fruit here and all the way down. When these new ones grow, when this, this grows into a cane next year, it'll be fruit growing all that way. So we want to set up the cane so that they spread the fruit over the largest area so that we get the most light, the most airflow, and also the most fruit we could possibly get. Another thing I wanted to mention is when should you prune your grapes? So you should prune your grapes only when they are in full dormancy. So when it comes to pruning grapes, the thing is, if you prune them too close to spring, they're gonna do something called bleeding out. Let me bring you over here, follow me down this way. So if you prune your grapes too close to the spring, if it's too warm out, they're gonna do something called bleeding out. Look right here. Here's a, here's a section I cut a bit early. It bled out a tiny bit, but now it's hardened over. So all those cuts that I just made in the full winter, they're not gonna bleed out. If you cut, make cuts, too early in the spring when it starts to get warm out, when the buds start to want to open, then they're going to bleed out. That's essentially like the, the blood of the vine and it's just going to be wasting a lot of energy. So you really want to prune your grapes in full dormancy. Around here, the best time is going to be January or February. If you have to prune your gra grapes late, that's okay. But just let's get a quick look at the difference. Look at this vine. Look how messed up and jumbled it looks. At the end of my pruning, it's going to look just like this one. All my, all my grapes are cane, prune, are cane prune varieties. So everywhere I'm just going to have two or three canes coming off the head of my vines. We're gonna follow that whole system throughout all the vines, both on this fence line and over the arbor. So again, having an understanding of where your, cane, where your fruit is gonna come from from your grapes is going to dictate what, what the kind you should, the kind of style you should use when pruning. And also it's going to dictate What's going to dictate that is the kind of style you're trellising. So if you have a four wire trellis, you're gonna want four canes. 
Just keep them a little shorter with less buds. If you want, want to do two canes, you could do that. I did three in this section because I've got more space over here than I do over there because there's another grapevine there. So again, let the, let the, let the fruit dictate what you should do. Listen to it and then, and then just apply the best practice for that particular fruit, that particular variety, that particular grape. So I showed you what to do if your grapes are heading towards production, but what should you do if you're setting your grapes up for production? So here's the grape that I tried to cut down last year, but it, it was so vigorous it just grew back from that little spot. I just don't have space back here, so I tried to remove it, but I couldn't. But say this was a younger grapevine and we wanted to set it up for future production. What we would do is take one of these good canes like this right here, we'd cut it where we want the head of the vine to be, say right here, I would remove everything else. I would remove all this stuff and I would just be left with this, this one cane. What will happen is these buds will grow in different directions. So you'll get a cane growing this way and a cane growing this way. Those will be my canes for next year. This will always stay and remain as the head of the vine and my canes will come off this way. So that's all I would do, just like that. And as this, after we allow the canes to grow, the year after that, we'll uh, replace them with new canes and just keep following that same pattern over and over and over. So when you're setting your grapes up when they're young, it's really easy. You're not gonna be getting good fruit in your grapes till about the third or fourth year. That's today's video growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Tuck's having fun in the back. But before I let you leave, I just wanted to mention one more thing. How long you leave your canes on your vine is going to depend on how many buds those canes have. So how many buds you leave on the vine is going to depend on how much fruit your vine can support. So to be safe, you can leave the canes, if you have two of them, about 24 inches or something like that. It's just going to, you just have to balance the size of the, how, how many buds you leave with the size of the vine. Like my vines over there, the older ones, I leave a lot of buds on that because look how old those vines are. Those are like 10 or 12 years old. They have a huge root system. They can support a lot of fruit. So that's why I have all those on there. So I had a blast out here. I hope you guys did too. Look at Tuck, he, check him out. He, he found something, something, something back there. He's always getting into stuff. He's always having a blast and making things more fun. But sometimes we guys gotta take away his old stuff. He's got something he, he, he knows he's not supposed to have. One of his old uh, bully sticks that he buried or something but whatever. So we had a blast out here. We hope you guys did too. We wanted to mention to grab some of the merch down at jamesprigioni.com. Grab a tuck shirt while you still can. Don't worry, I'm gonna take it away from him so he doesn't get sick. I also wanted to mention a thank you to one of our new channel members, Vanessa Arenas. I hope I said your last name right. Thanks for contributing. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. Thanks for having your hand in all the different stuff we're doing back here. It's been a lot of fun. I also wanted to mention, if you guys notice, I'm using the Felco pruners. Felco uh, sheath and everything. So we have a promo code, James10. If you wanna get some Felco pruners, the best pruners out there by far. If you're gonna make cuts, you're gonna to wanna to use these, just be careful, because they are super, super sharp. Me and Tuck had a blast again. We hope you guys did too. We'll see you guys real soon in the next one. Oh yeah, and happy new year. Tuck and James, we'll be back at you again real soon. We. Oui.